Okay, here we have Newton's second law, F equals ma, and the definition of acceleration, which is change in velocity over the time taken. If I substitute this acceleration for a here, I get this equation, F equals m v minus u over t. And if I expand that, I get a really useful equation, which is F equals mv minus mu over delta t. Basically, it should be in delta t over here, but I've just been ignoring that for now. But what does mv stand for? Well, that's the final momentum. Mu, that's the initial momentum. So this equation is really saying that the force or the resultant force is equal to the change in momentum over the time taken. Okay, in other words, we can got a new equation for Newton's second law, which is the resultant force is directly proportional to the rate of change of momentum, how quickly the momentum is changing. Okay, in this example, we have a 2.5 kilogram watermelon falling at 3 meters per second, hits the ground and comes to rest in 0 0.20 seconds. Calculate the average force on the melon. So I'm going to use this equation here. Okay, so what's my final momentum? Well, it's coming to a rest, so the final momentum is going to be zero. Initial momentum is mass times initial velocity. Okay, divided by the time for the collision, which is 0 0.2 seconds. And that gives me a force of 15 newtons, an average force of 15 newtons, because it might have been changing, but that's the overall force. Okay, so what happens if I use a airbag like this to double the time it takes for the collision to, for the boat, for the melon to stop? So we've increased the time. I don't have to do the maths again. Well, I know that the um, the force is inversely proportional to the time. So this is going to be times two at the bottom. And because that's the denominator, the force is going to become a half. So this is how most safety devices work. They increase the time taken for a certain change in momentum. And by doing that, they reduce the rate of change in momentum, how quickly the momentum changes. And that basically means that the force is smaller. Okay, consider this collision. Okay, so because here the person is just coming to an abrupt sudden stop, the change in momentum takes place over a short period of time, so the force is very large on the person and on the car. However, with safety features like airbags, seatbelts, and also this crumple zone here, they all work in the same way. What they all do is they change shape somehow, so the airbag compresses, the seatbelt stretches a bit, and the crumple zone crumples. And what this does is increases the time taken for the same change in momentum. So it's the both cars with the safety features and without safety features, they're hitting the wall at the same velocity. So the change in momentum is the same. However, with the safety features, the time taken for that change in momentum is longer with the safety features. So what does this do? Well, using this equation, what we've done is basically we've increased the denominator there, we've increased the time. And this, because it's inverse proportional, is going to reduce the force. First, what we want to say is that the rate of change of momentum is smaller, how quickly the momentum is smaller, which means that the force is smaller and less likely there will be some damage done. Okay, lots of safety features use this. For example, helmets, they uh, change shape when there's a collision. Your gloves change shape. Say, uh, crash mats like this change shape. They all increase the time taken for the change of momentum and therefore reduce the rate of change of momentum and the force.